most jobs on the centre console is this piece here which is down the side um, next to your leg. The way these go in, there are a bunch of clips uh, at the back of it, uh, which clip in down to the side here. Uh, there's this thing here, and this is for the left hand side, but that's going to go down uh, there on that, like this little piece there that it slides around. There's this piece here, which is actually just stuck on. I've actually glued mine on so they don't come off. And that sort of just jams up the side here, just to stop everything from rattling around. And also there's another piece here, which goes into the hole on each side. And that'll actually come off loose again. I've glued those in there, so they're just in place and there's no chance of them rattling around. I just find that's a little bit easier. And to actually put that in place to actually install, when you're doing this, you're gonna line it up and push it forward. Look at the, the knob there, put that in the hole, but also you need to bend this out to actually make it clear of all the clips. So again, push that forward and then just push it forward like that until you can see on the inside here that those clips are lined up. And then we can just push those in. To remove that, it's actually pretty simple. These clips are, aren't particularly tight, which is nice. Just get a pry tool and just gonna pop that in there and just pop that out. And then you're just going to go along. And once they're all out, when you pull this out, don't rotate it up. You want to pull it perfectly rewired. Otherwise, it's going to be, which I did on mine, actually easy to break one of these little pins that goes down the side there. So pull it rewards. You can actually look down the side and see the last of the knobs for the clips that you need to make sure is clear. And then you're just going to gently wiggle it rearward, and that'll just pop straight out. To remove the surround here, raise the armrest obviously, start at the back and then just gently pry up here. There are two clips there that'll pop out. Uh, the other clips that you've got in here are a beam, the bottom of those switches, uh, the second notch down at the top of that silver piece there and a beam the R. That's pretty, I mean, I guess it'd be hard to break, but you want to be able to push down here and pull up where the actual clips are, so there's no risk of breaking it. So I'm just going to pull up there, 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 and then there, and then that will just pop off quite nicely. And see those clips down the side as well as those two uh, down the bottom. To put it back on, uh, it's quite tight with this rubber surround that goes around it. It was clear when they put this on in the factory that this actually got damaged a little bit. So my advice to you is to put it in the front there and make sure that it's fed down in there correctly first. Like so. There is a knob that needs to go into a hole down the side of each one. And then once it's in the correct position, then you can put that in place and that'll just push down at those clips nicely all the way around. Prior to removing this piece at the back here, uh, like I described before, easiest to remove that uh, with the eight screws underneath there. Make sure you have that tray in there, because if you drop one of those screws, it'll just go down into the transmission tunnel, which I did, which is bad, which means you're pulling everything apart to find the screw. Uh, prior to actually moving this, removing this piece here, you need to remove the carpet at the back here. So pry off the speaker covers on both sides and then unhook the carpet from those and then just remove the whole carpet and then you're able to get access to this. To remove this piece at the back here, um, you're gonna have to move this up and down a little bit and to create a bit more space here, remove the pad off the top. There are just eight T25 torques that you just access from the underside here and just pull all of those uh, out and then just pull off the pad. It gives you a little bit more room back here when you're doing this because you're pretty tight for space. And then what we're going to do, there's a clip here and a clip here and sort of a guidance pin there. So you're going to pull them out and just sort of have this in sort of a mid position and then lift it up and then sort of just wiggle it like that. And what you're looking at, the guidance pins that go into down the side here and there's two clips that go in the top there. To put it back on, again, have it in a mid position and sort of work its way down. You need to get those things there past these aluminium tabs that stick out. So you sort of have to lift it around and then feel underneath and guide those into that position there. Look at the side here, because that's got to obviously line up. Now once it's in that position there, you can feel underneath and guide it into that position on both sides. 
And once you've guided it into both sides in the right spot, then you can clip it down into place and then you can put the pad on the top again. To get this tray out here, the first thing you want to do is obviously remove that bit at the back which we saw before. Uh, and then actually getting this thing out is a bit of a pain. There's actually an electronic box that sits under there as well as the 12 volt uh, connector which is behind. This one here, just the way it's set up, it's a bit bizarre in that you can't pull it out without actually, there's a risk of actually damaging the actual unit that's underneath there. It's a little sensors control box. So to actually, really, the first thing I want to do is get a pry tool underneath here because there are two clips on this side and two on that side there after you've removed those two screws back here. And then I'm going to pry that up on each side. Okay, and once that's up, and you can't see it on the camera, but the plug is actually just there for this unit, and you can't come free of that because it actually sticks forward and it's underneath this aluminium piece which is part of the centre console. So you actually need to release this control unit and it's held on by a couple of arms here uh, with big barbs on the end. So get a small screwdriver like this, push it down like that on both sides and then what you're going to do is push that down and that'll actually release it. I'll show you what it's doing in a moment. And then once you do that, it's a bit stiff. Uh, and then you can pull it up. But there's the control unit there, and it's connected by these two barbs here. And then once it's like that, you can disconnect it. And the way it's put in there is actually just slots up in there like that, and then pushes back up. So again, to actually release that, you stick the screwdriver down like that. Actually, just do it with two screwdrivers, probably easiest. Like that and then you just push it out that otherwise the plug that goes in there actually hits that piece there uh, and it'll just reef the whole thing out which is clearly not what you want to do and you might damage the, uh, the sensor to actually remove it from the back here all we're going to do is rotate it up like this okay and then pull it out because that 12 volt connector actually sort of sticks in underneath here and then once that's clear, you can pull out, and there's very little room to remove. You just get in there and just pull that plug off there downward, um, and then you can release the whole thing and take it away. To actually put it back in, you're going to sit it here like this, get uh, your fingers in there and plug that in, and then rotate it up like that so it can slide down the back, and then it can go down to that normal position. And now you've got the problem of getting this in again because this is quite difficult to get into position. So the first thing you want to do is connect the plug. And then what I'm going to do is sort of put it half in. So I'm going to push it up there like that. And then as I blow it down, I'm actually having the plug underneath that aluminium piece. And there's very little room here. And then I'm just going to takes a fair bit of force to sort of get that in the first bit of movement and then once I get it sort of half in there then I can push this down and then I can get my fingers underneath like here and push up and it's now clicked into place. To be honest, probably the hardest thing in this entire <laughs> interior of this car to put back together but uh, after cutting my hands and playing with this for about, I don't know, an hour to try and work out the best way to do this. Um, that's what I've found actually works okay. So to remove bits from the center console area here, the first thing you'll want to do is remove the surround uh, and that's after you remove the, the side uh, bits here. Uh, to get the um, switch assembly, which is that one there, out, it just has a uh, connection at the bottom so and it just clips on uh, with these silver things at the side and they just push straight down here like this so uh, I'll leave the connection off but that would just push straight down like that and pulling it out just simply just the reverse just put it underneath the middle there and just pop it up and that'll just pop straight out and disconnect that plug once you remove that 
Then this little tray at the back here can come out. The way it goes in, uh, it's got a, two clips at the back here which slot into holes at the back and some uh, little clips here that slide under pieces in here. So you put it in there and then just pull it rearward and obviously to take it out once this switch assembly is gone, you just push that forward and it just pops straight out. To remove the assembly around the, the gear lever, and this is obviously a PDK, this thing you want to do, put the key in, just turn uh, the ignition to on, uh, obviously don't start the engine, and then just rotate it or move the gear lever to to drive and then just turn the ignition off. The key won't be able to come out, it'll give you a warning but that'll go away after a few minutes. Uh, and the lever itself, the way this actually gets held on, you can see there's a twisty bit at the bottom that locks it, that unlocks it. So all you need to do is put it in the correct position and then once it's down there we're going to lock it like that. Um, and then it just unlocks like that and pulls straight off. With it in that position, uh, and the gear lever removed is when this can come off. This just slots straight over the top. There are no electronics or anything like that. And there are just four clips at the front and back of it that just go straight on. And to get that off, all you need to do is just lever up at each end. And that pops straight off. If you do want to, you have all this off and you want to get the key out, etc. Uh, it's very easy just to push. This is actually the equivalent of pressing the button on the on the actual gear lever, push it, and then you can just move the the gear stack as required. So if you want to push it back to park, so you can uh, take the ignition out of the key out of the ignition, then that, that's fine to, to go and do with that. When you're removing the gear lever, uh, you can do it from park, so I can just rotate it there and just pull it off. But when I first did it. Because this is at a funny angle inside this circular piece here, it really didn't want to um, rotate, it was quite tight. So, and then I moved it to park, sorry, to drive, and it was much easier. However, now it's been moved a little bit, uh, I can do it in park, but if you are having troubles, move it to drive, and you'll probably find it's a lot easier to remove. To remove the PCM, put the ignition to on, move the gear lever to drive, and then, uh, turn the ignition off and go and disconnect the battery. Make sure you cover this up. You can remove the, the gear lever if you want, but I actually would prefer to keep it on there. It actually doesn't give you much extra room, and there's still plenty of room to move it out. And also, I'm a bit worried about that plastic piece on the top of the gear knob that it might break. So just put something over the top of that. Uh, when you're removing the, the PCM itself, uh, there's plenty of room to get it out, but actually getting the plugs off at the back is quite difficult. So, and the risk when you're turning it around, scratchy things, I actually reckon it's pretty high. So, uh, once you sort of get the thing out a little bit, I would cover everything in towels or whatever you've got to make sure that nothing gets damaged. But all you need to do is just the four torque screws around here, and then we're gonna pull it out. When you pull the PCM out, just sit it on top of the gear lever that's been covered. There's gonna be a bunch of connectors here. There's a big one in the center. It just has a big lever. Uh, it'll be like that. You just wanna Grab your finger there, lift that, and that'll just rotate and pull the whole thing out. That's really, really simple. Leave it like that for the install, and then you're just going to pop it in there. It'll leave it forward, uh, and that'll just suck it into it uh, and lock it in place. The others here have the different aerials, etc., um, that go to the unit. The secret to this is patience. These are really tight. Each one of them has a tab that are all a little bit different to press. That will loosen it, but then you've just got to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and they might take a minute or two weeks, they're a bit of a pain. Uh, but patience is the key. You can see where it goes to on the back of the unit there, each of the five aerials. Uh, I think there's sometimes a sixth uh, in that position there, depending on what's actually fitted to your car, and that's obviously where the big one goes there. Once uh, you've done that, if you want to remove the air conditioning unit, sorry, the air conditioning control unit, which is just this one here, then you can just lift that up and out. That just pops straight out. There is a lift and throw connector, as well as, i just turn it around, it's probably easier. So that lift and throw is that one there, as well as the two connectors there. That one's the power, you just push in there and pull that out. And the other one is a press, that 
inside there. That wiggles out. Go on there, the pads pop straight out. Uh, before you install, there's a rubber surround like most things uh, on the center console. Make sure that's right in the right spot. Connect those and then that just pushes straight back down again. To get this piece off the front here, this piece along the side here needs to come off. There's a single screw just there that needs to come off with T25 Torx. And then once that is out, you're just going to push this forward. On the passenger side, there's going to be the 12 volt outlet just there. So when you pull, uh, you're going to push this forward, it's going to slide off a bunch of uh, pieces here. And then you're going to disconnect that on the driver's side. There isn't one of those. So we just hopefully can do this without my legs being in here. And it slides off this piece just there, as well as let's pull off this one first. As well as you can see, um, there's a bunch of pieces here that slide on two different bits uh, in there. And it slides, that piece there slides up in behind that bit there and that's where that screw goes uh, on top of that. So obviously the installation uh, is the reverse of that where you line everything up, pull it back into these places and then put that screw back in. To remove the glove compartment, there's a, a few tasks that need to be done initially to get access to the screws, etc. That actually take the thing off. First thing you want to do, just pop open. On there, there's just a single clip uh, like that, and a couple down the bottom that go in here, and they just pop straight out. Next thing is this one here. So there's two little clips that go into those spots there, they just pop straight out. The next one is the, the drink holder. Open those up, get yourself a, a screwdriver, and there is two holes at the back, but there's the one sort of that's closest to the pivot. You're going to push up, there's actually a little clip in there, and you're going to push it up, you'll see if it's a little spring, and then pull it out. There's one on both sides. And that just pops straight out. The actual holes that you're pushing it up through. Uh, that one there and the spring little things are up in here then you can close that up and put that away the next thing you want to do is on the underside of here there's actually a piece of foam that actually connects in two positions on the glove compartment to three positions back here and Porsche have used these big flat sort of like a screw in rivet and if you just use a flathead screwdriver you can unscrew one once you get them a few turns you can just do them with your fingers and that's what that looks like so you put a screwdriver in there and just turn those and there's, like I said, two on the, the glove compartment that you want to remove. One of the more difficult things with the removal of the glove compartment is to actually remove this thing first because there's a connection for the aux and the USB as well as the 12 volts behind it. There's a big clip in behind here and you can see there's actually a little notch in there. I've actually put that in there. The workshop manual talks about a notch being there but mine didn't have one. And when you get a tool like this and push that in there, it actually releases that and then hopefully This one handed is a bit hard. There we go, and that just pops out. So, what you'll see from behind there, you can see that big clip down there. My piece didn't have a notch just in there that allowed me to put that tool through there and pull that out. Um, so, I've actually just ground a little notch in there to make it a little bit more easy, a little bit easier. And then on the back here you've got the 12 volt connector which we're going to remove and each of these. these. And the one last thing that you need to do before 
we actually start unscrewing things is the footwell light, which is down underneath here. Uh, it's really difficult to show. You actually lever it out from the front. Actually, that's just popping out there now. And then you just disconnect that cord or the cable. And then that's um, obviously out of the way. And then what we're going to do, there are a bunch of screws. So there's one in here. That one there. There are three along the front here. They're all T25. Now you'll see that they're the two for the clips as well that hold in the cup holder. Don't remove those. Uh, they're the ones that are more forward and inboard. Uh, the ones that are further back and outboard are the ones that you want to remove. So there's three of those along here. Um, there are also two, one there and one back here, which are E8 E Torx which you need to remove as well. So once you remove all of those screws, then the thing will be loose, but it'll be sitting here up on clips, and then you can just rotate the whole thing down with that door open. Allow these cords to fit out the back. There are a couple of electrical connections that you need to disconnect, and then the glove box will come free. So once you've removed all those screws, it's actually just sitting there like that, and it's held up by a clip in here. I can now just pull it down, clear. Once you're in that position there, that just pulls out, unclip that one there, and the whole thing just pulls out. A couple of things to note, I didn't Pull that thing there off, which I showed you before, but that was actually hooked up on that, so that needs to come off as well. So uh, that single screw there and pushing that forward will allow that to obviously come off, and then the bit of the the glove box that was hooked over there won't catch on that. This is that piece of foam, uh, and that's where those things connect. And there are another three up the back here. So to install, obviously we're going to connect this connect that, push that into place, push it up in here, so it's sort of just hooked up in place, and then you can put all the screws in, and then it's just the reverse of before. A couple of things about the, the glove compartment. The footwell light, that's obviously, this is at the back here, so it's gonna be installed like that. Make sure when you uh, reinstall it, you have the, the connection there at the, the rear. Because uh, what you want to be able to do, the way this design is, be able to lift it the other side, lift it from there, and, and pull it out, and then disconnect the plug from there. Uh, the electrical connection uh, for the USB etc. will go through that hole there. The other connection for the light and the locking mechanism is over there. This is the the plug that's on the inside. You can see that clip in there. You need something to actually poke inside there and lower that. And because of where it actually is in the glove compartment, it's really difficult to do that. So I would suggest sort of carving out a notch like I've done that, done there to actually to remove that. Uh, the plug that goes in there just pulls straight off. This one here for the aux and USB, it's these ones on the side. You just need to pry those open. So I just push a small screwdriver down that side and that side it opens it up and then you can wiggle those out so to remove lots of stuff from this side the first thing i've done is i have um, had the ignition on turned it off so the wheel is still unlocked uh, and then i've disconnected the battery if you actually want to remove the steering wheel then you actually want the steering wheel to lock so turn the ignition off completely prior to removing the airbag so the wheel is locked and then you can actually um, turn against the lock to on the, the big screw that uh, holds it on. But if you're not doing that, then I find it's probably better off just to uh, have the wheel so I can actually turn it like this. The, uh, the battery is off and it just means I can move the steering wheel to different places to make it easy to do things. Uh, so if we wanted to remove the airbag, normally the steering wheel is in the normal position, but it's a little hole 
just there. Just a screwdriver is all you need. And what you're going to do is plonk it up inside there. And there's a little spring-loaded catch. It's actually easier if you put a little bit of pressure on the airbag on the horn like that, and that'll actually release it. And then it'll just pop straight out. Uh, there's a couple of connections there. You're going to lift up those orange tabs and then just pull those off. Uh, inside here, and you can't see it from the video, there's a whopping great big triple square that you would just uh, turn, turn to actually remove. Now when you're putting this thing back on, it's really important that um, this cord goes down a nice slot down in here. Uh, if it feels like it's binding on the way back in, stop and realign things because I've had this before where you get to about here and it's not feeling like it's actually pressing properly and it's sort of jamming up inside and it actually jams up the horn and becomes very, very difficult to get out again. So when you're putting it back in, um, it's probably easiest to actually push that screw in. So you can actually just feel it going nicely in there. Yeah, yep, it's definitely not binding and then it'll just click into place and now that horn obviously works fine. Can't stress enough that if you're actually going to disconnect the airbag, that you must have the, the battery disconnected. Now to get at other stuff in here, the first thing to get at the instrument cluster or any of the stuff uh, up in here, you need to actually remove this top piece here because it's connected by a padding to this surround around the instrument cluster. So you need to disconnect this first. And the way you do that, there's two tabs, one on each side. You can see there's a hole in there. I'm going to push that and that actually just pops up. And you can only do it with a steering wheel turned in the direction of that tab, I'm going to do the other one, it's going to pop up, and then I'm going to turn that like that, and this will just pop straight off. On the underside here, there are two electrical connections, but I think they're from microphones that sit on the top here, on the two sort of vents up the top here, so we're going to disconnect those. Now once you've disconnected those, this piece is actually connected via four clips too with a material piece which is connected to the surround of the instrument cluster. So what you need to do is, there's, it's a bit difficult to see, but there are th sort of three things that poke through from that, that are part of the, the cloth piece, and it's the centre one which is actually the clip. So you just want to push on it. Start at the edges is probably the best way to go, and just push those out, and then, once they pop out, you can pull that piece clear. And there's that piece there, you can see this on those three parts, and that middle one there, you just want to press on to actually release that. To get at the instrument cluster or any of this stuff around here, First need to remove these trim pieces. They're just like all the others, they just pop straight off. And that'll just come straight off quite happily with the key in it. There is the electrical connect just for the, for the light, so I'm just gonna pop that off on that side. If you need to replace the light switch, that'll actually just rotate like that and just pull straight out. There's a connect down. If you're going to be pulling the bottom piece off here because if you need to get underneath here you're actually better off you know, getting disconnecting as many of these electrical connections as possible and so you can just pull that one off there's others that's connected to the park brake to the ignition to there's a sensor on the left hand side of the steering wheel as well as the, the footwell light they the footwell light you can do you can just pull that down and disconnect and it's much easier to do that whilst it's here rather than uh, later on when you've actually pulled that panel down but the others you can actually the other one that's sort of to the left hand side of the steering wheel you can sort of get your hand in underneath and pull that off but the others here you need to lower this piece to actually do that well, that just rotates back in there and slots in place uh, the trim piece on the other side is again the same as all the others Now it's actually starting to bring out the, the surround because it's all sort of intertwined together there, that's fine. If it is starting to do that, just be a little bit careful. 
and pull it off separately. And now to get this surround out, there are a bunch of clips that are all the way around here. It's actually very tight up in the top. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to get a I'm going to start at the bottom here. I'm going to leave that out. And then I kind of freak you out a little bit how tight it's actually in there, but you just keep on wiggling your way around and it'll eventually pull all those clips out. And also out from underneath here and the thing will pop out. So if you can actually get hold of the top here and pull it out from there, that's going to be easiest once it's sort of you get a little bit past that and then that will come out. Now I've removed the four torque screws for the instrument cluster. You can see with it those four torque screws out it just moves out quite happily there. Uh, and then you want to get it to a position here where you can then get these connections behind. Now I'm not going to show you doing it because I'll have to cover everything up so nothing gets scratched and I uh, you're not going to be able to see anything when I do that. So, uh, enough said that, cover the steering wheel, cover all the dash. There's a, the antenna connection is that one just there. And on this left hand side, which you won't be able to see, is the big lift and throw connector, which is up um, in here. Right, with those two connections removed, I can now just slide out the instrument cluster. So you've got the big connection on the left hand side, you've got the antenna on the right. And what they look like, so it's just a big lift and throw, Hopefully you can see that. So um, that's like that, you'll need to get your thumb in there, push and rotate that down to remove it. Uh, and obviously it's reversed to put it back in. This one here sits there like that, you can get your thumb on the underside. There's not much room in there to actually see what's going on. And then wiggle it out, that'll come on out. To remove this piece here, we are going to reach in here and disconnect that electrical connector for the, for the center on the left hand side there. I'm gonna reach under here and I'm gonna lower the a footwell light and disconnect it. So there's the light there. And then there is one screw there, one screw there, and the two on the underside, the E8 Torx, and then this thing uh, should just pop straight off. So once you've got those four screws out, the one, this is the one behind the, the instrument cluster, the one on the side, the two E8s at the bottom here. Make sure you've also got removed this piece here, which is in that lower foot wheel down the bottom here. Uh, that's exactly the same as the other side where you are removing the, uh, the glove box. There's a single screw and then this just pushes forward. The only difference on this side, on the driver's side, is you don't have the the 12 volt connection, so there's no electrical connector there, which is kind of nice. And then once you've done that, then this is just sitting on clips here. You can just pull that rearward like that, and that'll just pop straight off. Uh, the electrical connectors for the two on the left-hand side have already been disconnected. And now we've already got that one for the lights, which we could have disconnected before, so we'll do that there now. There's the one here for the e-brake, for the electric park brake as well as for the ignition and then that's the piece there so just to clarify what you're seeing that's where the two E8s would be that's where the footwell light goes on make sure when you install that the plug goes at the back because you're there's going to pull down at the front there uh, at the front left You've got the connection for the sensor, which is on the inside, on the right-hand side. You've got the plug for the, uh, the ignition, the, the park brake, and for the lights. What it actually plugs, uh, the clips, are that one, that one, that one, and that one. And like I said uh, earlier, 
they are in very, very tightly. That was a bit frightening actually removing those to start off with. I've just put a bit of grease on there now and they just pop out much, much more easily. So uh, I would suggest doing that. Uh, to put that back in is obviously just the, the reverse of that. If you want to get access to the uh, instrument stalks here and you need to get uh, this cover off at the bottom here, uh, there are two screws uh, in quite deep resets here. These little baby ones here. Unlike everything else, these are T20, not T25. And they are about, oh, mate, they're way up inside there. So you can't even see, they're probably about five centimeters up there. So T20 is what you want. Otherwise you'll be scratching around trying to work out what you actually need. Now the others, you can actually get access to them by turning the steering wheel here. There is one there and one on the other side and then you can lower those down. Just be careful so you don't mar up the steering wheel. They're also T20. Use a baby magnetic tool to grab hold of those. Once that comes off, you can lower it down and you should have a single electrical connector for the, for the steering wheel adjuster switch on the underside there and then you have access to everything uh, inside here if you need to replace uh, any of these components. To remove the, the vents from uh, the, the dashboard uh, the vents themselves, there are, they're actually all slightly different. Those on the outsides have the tweeter. Uh, there's an electrical connection that comes in from this side, which is that one there. So once it's removed, you'll need to disconnect that. Uh, the, the ones for the inner panel don't obviously have the tweeter. There's actually an extra air conditioning uh, outlet, which is at the top here. And each of these sides, so the left and the right of those center ones are actually different. They're a different part number. So I would mark those and they're not immediately obvious. The actual vents point in a bit of a different uh, angle. And if you put them in the wrong one, they just, they kind of look like they fit, but they don't fit particularly well. So I would just mark those with a big L or R when you pull those out so you know where they go back because it's not immediately obvious which way they go. These are held in by six clips. There are three on each side and they just pull uh, straight out. However, they are in there pretty tightly. Uh, unfortunately, mine, and I don't know why they did this, they actually had the cloth electrical tape on the top clip. So when I pulled those out, it all jammed up and it made them really, really difficult to remove. So I've actually pulled those that off and just cleaned that all up and they seem to go in there. They certainly hold in there quite happily uh, and they're not going to come out without that there and they don't rattle around or anything so uh, I'm not sure exactly why they did that in the factory and I haven't seen that uh, anywhere else that they talk about. Uh, so when you are uh, removing these the secret is to uh, I found to actually sort of get your fingernails and actually lift this up so in there and just lift that up and once it's in that position there don't lever it but get a pry tool and actually lift it up so it sort of holds in like, and it'll actually hold up about a centimeter up and stop there. And then once you get that, just grab hold of it and wiggle it rearward and it'll just pop straight out. Uh, the, the workshop manual talks about a tool which actually goes in here and hooks around uh, the back here to pull those out. I tried to make a tool like that and was pretty unsuccessful. Uh, it just does not want to uh, grab hold of this bit here to actually hold it to pull it out. Uh, it's obviously quite a specific shape to actually be able to grab hold of that. Uh, whereas this method quite worked out uh, quite happily. The only difficulty was just initially getting it out because those things were on so tight. I'm not gonna connect that, I'll just put that in. When you're actually putting these in, you'll notice in here that there's a slot there. That actually is what that goes on. So when you're putting them in, sort of push them down at the back, but actually look down here and slot it in there first, and then you can push down at the rear, and then 
they will quite happily just pop straight in. Uh, I struggle to work out how they actually put that uh, in there, but the key is actually get them slotted in the things here first, then put it at the rear, and then just push it straight back down. So to remove it, I'm gonna lift up with my fingernail, get my pry tool underneath it, and then just lift it up like that. And once it sits there like that, then I can just pull that rear and I would be able to disconnect that, that tweeter connection. If you need to remove the stopwatch or the, the piece here that has the hazard lights and the, uh, the locking buttons in it, uh, the first thing you need to do, remove the two vents from the side. The PCM needs to be removed. And the reason you need to, uh, reason you need to do that is because to disconnect it, there are two screws, one on each side for the stopwatch. Uh, they come in from underneath. You actually need to get a T20 Torx from underneath through some holes that are in there to remove those. Once you've done that, uh, and this is loose, it's actually gonna be on the inside, and the way this fits together is uh, you actually push it out, you then pull this cover off, and then you can remove the, remove the stopwatch. There are two electrical connectors. There's that one there, which is for the buttons, which is just to pull out the other one, which is that one there. For the stopwatch, each one where there's a button on the side and then you remove it to the rear. The way this fits together inside that, and that's the right way out there, and it just pushes in from the rear. Now the problem with this is that there is a rubber sort of square section O-ring that fits in a slot all the way around here, which is just sort of shoved in and it's not particularly tight. And mine was clearly deformed out of the factory because when you actually push it in, it actually slots in quite a way and this has got pushed back um, and that's the thing that actually holds it nicely in there. So what I've done is I have just put a little bit of super glue around the edge after I've fitted it just to keep it in, in place uh, that's going to be behind everything so you don't see anything uh, and then I've just put some carbon graphite powder around that and that just slots in there nice and easily without deforming. When this uh, goes in, obviously we need to connect the electrical connector first. It's going to go in sideways, down like that. And then you can actually set it all the way back in there quite happily. It's not going to fall down because there's no, I mean the holes just aren't big enough for it to fall down. So it's well out of the way, this, this one just has some clips in it, so that just pushes straight in to remove that. You can actually easily do it with your fingers. There's just a clip, four clips around the edge of it, so that just pops straight out uh, before that goes in. Then you can put on the electrical connector. Once that's in place, then you can get the, the stopwatch and then just pull it up nice and gently in the correct position. And then those two screws can go up on the inside. Uh, the reverse of that obviously remove the two screws, which is going to push that rearwards out the back. Don't worry about the electrical connector. Then I can just lift that out, disconnect it at the back, and then pull out the stopwatch and disconnect it.